All right, this is fifth grade module two, lesson 29, the final video for this module. And we're going to be solving some big old word problems using division and lots of multiple steps. And so this homework assignment is actually pretty long, even though there's not very many homework problems. It's the homework itself is going to take a little while. So I'm going to draw a bar model because, uh, you know, when students can visualize the problem, that's half the battle, and then they can solve the problem using any number of ways. It's visualizing the problem in the first place. That's the trick. So Michelle wants to save $150. I'm going to underline that. For a trip to Six Flags Amusement Park. If she saves $12 each week, how many weeks will it take her to save enough money for the trip? So I'm going to think of this as a bar and that bar represents the $150. And then she wants to save $12 each week. So there's $12, there's $12, there's $12. And the idea would be, how many $12 do we need? How many 12s do we need to equal 150? And so that's a division problem. So we're going to do 150 divided by 12. And, well, 12 goes into 15. And we can see that it goes into 15 one time. So we're going to put our 1 there. There's our 12. And we're going to subtract and we get 3. Now, technically, that wasn't a 15. Technically, that was 15 tens because the 5 is in the tens place. Uh, but we think of it as 15, and 12 goes into 15 once. We got three left over, so that's really three tens. And so when we drop that zero, now we have 30 left over, 30 ones left over. And we know that 12 goes into 30 two times, because that's 24. And we're left with six left over. And we can continue that six left over if we add a decimal and a zero and drop that zero, we could think of that six as 60 tenths. And 12 goes into 60 tenths five times. That's 60. And that gives us no remainder left over. So the big question is, well, okay, what does that 12 and a half mean? All right, what does that 12 and a half mean? Well, it means we're going to have 12 12s up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then this point 5 means we're going to have a half a week left over because each 12 represents one week. And we have a half a week left over. So um, if we were to round down to 12, the answer, she wouldn't quite have enough money left over. Technically, she needs 12 and a half weeks, so probably the more appropriate answer would be she'll have enough money in 13 weeks. So Karen, she works for 85 hours over a two-week period, and she earns $1,891.25 over this period. So the question is, how much does Karen earn for eight hours of work? So this is a couple of steps. First thing I see is I'm going to think of this whole bar as representing $1,891.25, but I'm also going to see it as being representative of the 25 hours. All right? So, I mean, I said 25. I meant 85. 85 hours. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 85 of them. All right, and we want to know how much is one of these hours worth. All right, that's our first step. So we're going to divide, and we're going to divide 1,891.25 by 85. That's a big problem, but we could do it. So um, 85 doesn't go into one uh, technically, that's 1,000. So we can't take 1,000 and break it up. So we're going to think of 1,800s. 
and 18 can't be broken up into 85 groups, or we're thinking of it that way. 189 tens. Ah, now we have enough tens to separate them into 85 separate piles. So we're going to think of that as 189 tens, and our quotient is we're going to guess 85. So let's go over here. I mean, uh, 2. So we're going to do 85 times 2, and I get 170, and that's a good enough estimation. And I get 19 left over. So I'm going to drop that 1. And I think um, we're going to try 2 again, because that's probably good enough. So we get 170, and we subtract. We get 21 left over, so technically that's 21 whole numbers. So if we drop the 2, now that's 212 tenths. Hmm, maybe it's good enough that we should try 3. So let's try 85 times 3. I get 255. Oh, that's way too much. So we're going to stick with the 2. And we already know that answer is 170, and we can subtract, and we get 42. And I'm going to drop the 5, and so that's 425 hundredths. And I'm going to think of this as a 90. Let's say 90, 180, 270, 360, 450. Hmm. I'm going to use as my estimation 4. So let's try 85 times 4 and see how close we get. So 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 8 is 32, plus 2 is 34. So let's see that. So I'm going to put a 4 here, and I'm going to put 340 here, and I'm going to subtract. 5 minus 0 is uh, 5, and then, oh, 42 minus 34 is 8. So 85. So that means we could have gone in one more time. So I'm going to cross off that 4, and I'm going to bump it up to a 5, which means we can subtract another 85, and then we are officially done, because we have a remainder of 0 now. And so our answer is 22.25. But what does that mean? So it says how much, so she earns um, 1,891.25, or 25, uh, $1,891.25. We divide by 85, and so that tells us that each hour, this hour right here, is equal to $22.25. So that's one hour is $22.25. And we're asked... Well, how, many, how much money will she make for eight hours of work? So what that means we have to do is we have to multiply. 22, 25, that's how much money she makes each hour, and we're going to multiply by eight. So that gives us 40, eight times two is 16, plus four is 20, carry the two. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 2 is 18, carry the 1. 18 times 2 is 16, plus 1 is 17. So we get 17,800, but because we had two decimal places, we need two decimal places in our answer. So the answer is $178. So all told, we're going to go all the way up to the top. How much will she make in 8 of these hours. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these hours. All told, these eight hours, she will make, what was it? A hundred and seventy-eight dollars. That was a lot of work. Last problem for this video, a park is four times as long as it is wide. Uh, four times as long as it is wide. So what does that mean? Hmm. I'm going to think of it as one, two, three, four. And so there's the four times as long as it is wide. And then, so I'm going to imagine the park looking like this. And if the distance around the park is 
12.5 kilometers. What is the area of the park? Well, that means we're going to add this length plus this length plus this, 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 and this. So that's a total of 10 little lengths. And we're going to add these 10 lengths up, and we're going to get 12.5. Well, an easier way to do that would be to, to figure out what the, the length of one of those little pieces is, is to do 12.5 divided by 10, because it took 10 units to go all the way around the block to equal 12.5. So now we're going to divide by 10. And actually, we can stop, because we already know that 12.5 divided by 10, the decimal just moves one place to the left, so we get 1.25. So each little unit is 1.25 kilometers, uh, one little length right here. So now the question is, what is the area of the park? So what that tells us is that our park right here looks like this, and we know that the width is 1.25, and then the length is going to be four times as much. So we're going to do 1.25 times 4. and we get 5. So that means the length is 5. And remember, the question is saying, what is the area of the park? Well, the area is found by doing length times width. So now we're going to do length times width, and we're going to do 1.25 times 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. We have two decimal places, so we're going to have two decimal places in the answer. So the answer is 6.25, and we should call it kilometers squared. So it's 6.25 squared kilometers. And that is that one. That was a big, long problem as well. And that wraps up. Grade 5, Module 2. We've done the final video for this module.